Serving and Empowering Nurses. This is Nurse Connect with Christine. Now, our guest for today is a beautiful mom of two. Her name is Jillian Di Maano, and she has been a registered nurse for 14 years now. Initially was a registered nurse in the Philippines and have moved to Dubai and now current uh, registered nurse in Australia. Now she's got an offer at the hospital in Melbourne as an operating theater nurse. I love her character. Um, you know, you can follow her if you'd like to, but she has got also a perfect score in her OSCE. What, a, what an excellent um, achievement, Jill, and something that you could include on your resume, right? Correct. And so, um, yeah, so thank you so much for your time for this interview, Jill. You will be moving here in Australia soon, mm -hmm. and you must be very busy, so we appreciate your time. For those of you who are listening, she has two kids, right, recently gave birth. And a husband, and so <laughs> and husband. You know, it must be full on, right, Jill? <laughs> and yeah. so, um, yeah. So definitely, this interview for those of you statistically, there's about two to four thousand overseas qualified nurses gets registered in Australia every single year. And so, mm. I believe this interview with Jill having to go through the OBA pathway will definitely help a lot of nurses who are pursuing or wanting to pursue their dream here in the beautiful country of Australia. And so before we go through uh, the details, Jill, how long did the whole process took you from the beginning until you have got your um, registration? Considering that you have a family, you recently mm -hmm. just gave birth, which is amazing, um, Jill, the work that you do, my God, um, you must be proud of yourself. And um, yeah, so... Let's go through the uh, that question, Jill. How long did that process took you? Mm -hmm. So uh, the the process itself it will vary from one person to another because there are a lot of factors involved. So w in my experience, I did uh, self check in October twenty twenty, and then mm. I re just received my registration last August seven twenty twenty three. So if you will compute it, it's like almost three years. But again, mm. we have. During our time, COVID is heightened and some cities That's are right. on uh, lockdown or borders are closed. But now that the routine are going back to normal, so I think it's doable like one year. Mm -hmm. Yes, I believe that to Jill. Uh, some actually with our, the experience with our nurses, they actually get their uh, registration in less than a year. Mm, right? That's, so that's amazing. Past, uh, NCLEX in one go and OSCE in one go. Now, mm -hmm. let's let's talk about the self-check-in and portfolio stage first. Mm -hmm. um, with, with your experience, walk us through the first thing you need to do, you know, with the self-check-in, IQ and M assessment portfolio, mm -hmm. portfolio. What is the timeline for that and how much did you pay for it? Okay. So, um. For the whole process, you just have to start with the self-check-in. You have to check first in the AFRA website, uh, which mm -hmm. pathway are you taking um, with regards to your registration. So that's free, the self-check. Um, and then after that, if you're already decided, then you can register or create an account, uh, which will cost you like 640 Australian dollars for the IQNM assessment fee. And then um, you'll proceed with the orientation, which is like an, a one-hour video that mm. you can just do in one sitting. It's all about Australia and the healthcare system. So um, at least you have a glimpse of what you're entering into. <laughs> and then the portfolio mm. stage, which is um, you have to upload your documents, the cert certified true copy documents. Uh, mm -hmm. You will be well guided in the portal, so it's very easy. You just have to prepare um, everything and then, yeah. So for, for the timeline, um, with me, in my experience, I, I did it for three months because I have to prepare for for all my documents. But if, if yes. If the money is there and um, the documents are readily available, you can just do it in one to two weeks. I see. So that's mm. that's definitely quite fast, Jill. Um, yes. Give it, if you got it already, right? So that's a good mm, yeah. news. 
I, and also, I just have to, to verify with the listeners here, Jill, that when it comes to certifying documents, APRA do have a guideline, a specific guideline on how to document it, because for some mm -hmm. reason, some nurses ask that, ask that that question, right? So yes. we're going to link that in the description um, mm -hmm. uh, as well, just for them to, uh, you know, uh, certify the documents nice Correctly. and how yeah. wanted it. Yes. yes. And so, um, so that's the first thing that you have to do. And I believe um, uh, that doesn't take too much uh, jail, which is uh, mm. good, isn't it? Yes, correct. All right. So, so with the OBA pathway, Jill, uh, and for those <clears> of you who are listening, there there are two exams that they have to go through. And mm -hmm. the first one would be the MCQ NCLEX, which is the Multiple Choice Question National Council Licensure Examination. Yes. And um, yes, I do believe that you've gone through that deal. And so walk us through how much did you pay for this and how long did the whole process take until passing? Mm -hmm. With regards to the payment, so upon registration, you have to pay 220 US dollars. Um, and then before you sit your NCLEX exam, uh, you have to uh, pay the schedule fee, which is 180 US dollars. So a total of 400 US dollars. Mm -hmm. And then with regards with the process, again, it's, it, it will vary from person to person. So with my, with my uh, experience, I registered uh, September 2021, and then I sat the NCLEX uh, the, the next year of January 2022. 2022. So that's like three to four months. But again, um, you have to consider your review, your preparation. So with, in my case, I, I decided to um, like prepare first before I register. Right. Yes. Mm. Uh, very important, I believe, to prepare, of course. Yes. Uh, because mm. NCLEX is uh, quite difficult. I even you know, spoke to some professor, because I'm an mm -hmm. NCLEX professor. Uh, I know um, a few of them, and they said it's just a, a very difficult to pass. Mm -hmm. And so, uh, congratulations on passing that, obviously. Mm -hmm. And um, with the ATT, I believe in Australia, for those who are, of you who are listening, it, mm -hmm. it does expire in uh, six months, but in US, it's only um, how many days, Jill? It's, I think it's 90 days with, with US. Right, and so mm. they're going to have to get on, obviously, before even they get the ATT. I think Correct. that's the yes. uh, difference they to review mm. before they, they get that because it does expire, right? Mm. And with the PVT trick, Jill, mm. um, I believe everyone's doing that, of course, because yes. they wanted to find out, you know, <laughs> very quickly the result mm -hmm. of yes. the um, NCLEX. Did you, yes. did you have to do that? Yes, I did it, and um, especially with um, with uh, applicants for Australia. Unlike mm -hmm. US, they have this um, quick result, so you pay and then you'll get the result in two to three days. But with Australia, you really have to wait for six to eight weeks. So wow. the PVT will help to just lessen the anxiety of waiting. I can imagine. And um, and I believe though, Jill, uh, this time with the uh, NCLEX Australia, it's much faster mm -hmm. now, isn't it, to, yes, to get yes, the result? Yes. That's what we're hearing, and um, uh, that has been, um, uh, you know, uh, from my experience from the other nurse mm -hmm. that we have. Mm -hmm. And um, so the the official NCLEX result, it will, it does takes a bit of time, and. Um, any any tips, Jill? Because it's a hard exam to pass. I can mm -hmm. imagine. Do you recommend going to a review center for for this, or how um, did you review? Personally, you I I tips. yes, uh, I I uh, applied. I, I I enrolled in a review center because uh, right. personally, I I think it would really help me a lot. Uh, as I always say with um, my my friends, just get the best support system because you know it's it's very risky to go out there without uh, reviewing or having the right materials with you. So I I, I yeah. really suggest to get a review center that will help you. Yes, and I believe I'll uh, look what the, speaking to a lot of the athletics professors as well mm -hmm. and. Few, a few of them are my friends, and the tips that I got from the, uh, you know, the survey that I did in the group, 
I believe mm-hmm. what uh, what the other thing that helps them is, um, you know, practicing a lot of practice questions. Correct. Yeah. Questions, mm-hmm. Right. Because, you know, that will definitely um, uh, help with the preparation as well. And that's something that we offer at AUR and Pathway, uh, mm-hmm. Jill. And that, uh, you know, the test bank questions, we listen to all the, uh, yes. you know, the NCLEX that have already passed. And so mm-hmm. we've listened and that's what we've incorporated actually in our review. Okay. Yeah, that's so, exactly um, the best preparation. Yes. Right. So mm-hmm. uh, obviously after passing the NCLEX, Jill, Mm-hmm. And, um, you know, you, you obviously have to get the candidate report first, right, before you pass your NCLEX in U.S. Mm-hmm. And I'm going to, uh, for those of you listeners who are wanting to uh, get that uh, transfer in Australia, I, uh, we're going to uh, oh, no. put a dis- uh, link or description on our description where to contact us so we can send you the how to score transfer, okay? But the last, uh, second last exam is the OSCE, right, mm-hmm. uh, Jill? And so, yes. uh, it's an anxiety-provoking exam, isn't it? You've experienced it yourself. And by the way, uh, for those of you who are listening, Jill, we're so proud of her. She has got 10 out of 10 um, at AUR and Pathway. And you must be very proud. You should be proud of yourself, uh, by the way, Jill. With the Opera Oski fee also, it's quite expensive, isn't it? Um, it's $4,000. However, what I wanted to tell the listeners here is um, for them to know, with the OBA, with the previous bridging program, OBA pathway is actually way cheaper, okay? Mm. Because previously, uh, with the conversion program, you have to go, you know, you have to do your three months uh, placement in a hospital or a nursing home setting, and then you can't work, you have to be here yes, in the yes. for those months, so that's a lot of money jail right but correct the, yes and also when you study it's minimum fourteen thousand dollars right apart from the yes. the length of stay that you have to be here in australia and so i commend um apra for changing that however obviously with the oba pathway oski it's anxiety provoking exam um, mm. isn't it Jill? but did you pay for your apra oski fee straight away after you pass your nclex Actually, after NCLEX, I did not uh, pay immediately for the OSCE. Mm. I just yeah. made sure that um, the first thing that I uh, did is to find a review center for the OSCE okay. because I, I just want to prepare for it first before I register. So that's, mm. what, I, uh, that's what I did. Yes, and preparation is very important, Jill. And we, we are finding that some of our nurses... Uh, they they do start with their review first because it's a big investment mm. and you don't want it to you know to uh, really go you know go straight to the exam and not knowing what you're you're up for right definitely and yes so, correct um, I've been an I've, I've worked for APRA before I've been an examiner for OSCE mm. and um, you know and that's why we we develop and made a curriculum that will truly really help the nurses now. After passing the NCLEX, well, for those of you who are listening, Jill is an offshore mm. nurse. And so she has to wait for the legibility of letter, don't you, for, from APRA Correct. for you to yes. apply mm-hmm. your, um, your visa, right? And so talk, walk us Correct. through about that, Jill. Did you apply for tourist visa or a business class visa? What sort of, um, we might not even go to too much details of the evidence because for those of you who want it, who request mm-hmm. that, we are happy to help you. But how long did you have to wait for the approval and mm-hmm. have you got any support in Australia when you applied? Mm-hmm. So upon uh, registering or paying the OSCE, so the, uh, it, it took me a month to receive the eligibility letter. So as you have said, you will need it for applying the visa. And um, during my application, I just declared that I will be taking the OSCE. And then um, I also attached my eligibility letter. And because I have a family in Australia, um, they uh, mm-hmm. provided me with an invitation letter. So I think that that also helped me. But with, um, like your question, if, it, if you will take a tourist or a business visa, 
um, my personal experience is that I applied for a tourist visa. Again, it de- all depends um, with the immigration, what yes. what they will uh, give you. So with a tourist visa, usually, uh, also with some of my friends, that's the same case. They uh, gave us a one year validity for the visa, and it's a multiple entry. So um, if you need to go back to Australia after your OSCE, you can still use the same visas, which is you will save a lot of money if you take the tourist visa. And then again, it all depends with the immigration. <laughs> That's correct. And so let me just quickly uh, clarify that with our uh, listeners, Jill. To, for the, so mm. both could be a okay to apply. Okay, so tourist or business class visa, it's fine to mm. apply. So just to separate that for those of you yes. who are listening, um, if you if the sole reason for you coming in Australia is to take the OSCE, we can understand some of you still work overseas. And so business class yes. visa is uh, definitely suitable for you because you're obviously mm. coming in to Australia just to take the OSCE. And so that's definitely just for- very good for you. Yes. However, if you have a family here, you have enough funds, you still wanted to tour around mm-hmm. Australia maybe, and I believe, you know, for you, mm-hmm. for, for, if that fits you, then definitely go for the tourist visa, okay? Especially tourist like Jill, who has got mm-hmm. a um, family in Australia, and so that helps also to support their um, application coming into Australia. And also, uh, to let you know, just to let you know, Jill, we've had experience there's a lot of visa refusal at the moment and so Mm -hmm. currently Mm -hmm. it's very important to get guidance by the way in terms of requirements correct yeah Uh, for some reason um, immigration has become stricter uh, these days and so Mm -hmm. there's there has been a lot of refusal refusal so if you you are um, wanting to come here we're happy to guide you we can provide you the documents Mm -hmm. that you definitely need for Correct. your um, application. And how long did it take you to get your OSCE result, Jill? For the OSCE result, I think it's seven dreadful year, uh, dreadful months. A uh, week, sorry. Years, seven weeks. Fine. <laughs> <laughs> See, I can still remember the, the, uh, the, the time that I was waiting. So uh, it's seven weeks of waiting yes. for the result. It, it takes a long time, Jill, and um, I do hope mm. that APRA is listening and um, they'll be able to fast track the, the result. They did, actually, Jill. Um, uh, last Yes, yes, last, the last previous year. cycle before us. Yes, yes. yes. However, I think it, it's find... just four weeks. Yes. However, what we find now, Jill, if there's two um, scheduled intakes uh, consecutively, unfortunately, they still have to wait for a longer period of time. Okay, but mm. not, not like yes. eight weeks yes. as previously. So yes. um, uh, that's yes. a good thing. But I do hope that they, you know, they're gonna squeeze it in a lot faster, because of course, mm. you know, we have a big gap in the healthcare industry, and um, the nurses mm-hmm. are very much needed everywhere, especially here in Australia. I did attended a seminar um, a few years ago mm-hmm. that by 2025. Hundred thousands of nurses are needed in Australia, and so I we'll hope come. I hope oh. that they do. You know, um, uh, fast track the um, uh, regi- yes. uh, the, mm-hmm. the result. Now let's talk about the registration, Jill. Um, the, this is a very exciting part, of course. But what we do now, Jill, actually, yes. is after passing the OSCE, we encourage the nurses to, uh, and for those of you who are listening, um, so if you pa- you think you passed your OSCE or after you've done your OSCE, we encourage you to start with your uh, pro- procuring all your documents already. Isn't it, Jill? I think that mm-hmm. will be helpful. Correct, so correct. then you, you get registered straight away as soon as you, you know, you got your result with your OSCE. With the registration, Jill, mm-hmm. walk us through how much did you have to pay for the registration in Australia? Yes, you have to pay actually for uh, 489 Australian dollars wow. to start a registration. That's a lot of money, actually. I didn't realize that. that yes. Um, that's how much so it costs now. Correct. <laughs> 
Wow. <laughs> yep. so the whole process is very costly. I know. Um, is it complicated to yeah. go through the questions, you know, and provide all that documents mm -hmm. that they need? So actually, some of the documents you already have it when you prepared or uploaded for the portfolio. So mm -hmm. some of those documents, you will be uploading it again during your registration. With regards with the questions, um, you can, it's just yes or no questions. So it, uh, right. criminal history, uh, they will just ask about your health status. And of course, your work experience and uh, academic certificates you have to upload. And of course, the NCLEX and the English test um, results, you have to upload it there. As well, yeah. And um, mm -hmm. and I believe the uh, with the good standing, because this is where a lot of the nurses ask me a question. We just wanted to be mm. uh, clear, isn't it, Jill, that it has to come from the Board of Nursing where you are registered as correct. a nurse? Yes, so it has yes. to come directly yes, correct. from them. Right, yes, because that's one of mm -hmm. the upright requirements, so, of course. Mm -hmm. So yeah. the Certificate of Good Standing, yes, um, AFRA will provide you with the email, mm -hmm. and then you have to uh, request it um, from the licensing body where you are registered. You will have to give it to them, and they will directly email AFRA with a certificate. So that's the process. Yep, and so it, it it's all nice and clear anyway, isn't it? When you um mm -hmm. when you go through that registration, now with the with a lot of the offshore nurses, um, give them tips, uh, Jill, because some of them they still have to go come back here again, isn't it? For to present mm -hmm. in person, yes. Do do they really have to do that, or what are the tips that you can give them so then they don't mm. have to come back here and just get registered? For those who are offshore. Mm, yes, correct. Yes, uh, you have to present in person, but there are many ways to do it. So the mm. usual is, um, yeah, as you have said, um, some are coming back to Australia and then going back again to their home country or where they are uh, residing at the moment. So um, with my case, um, because I, uh, my tip is when you do your OSCE, when you are there in Australia, open a bank account, open a bank account. Um, during that process, you will be presenting in person with the bank officer and Afro will honor that. So um, especially if you have a family in Australia and you have a permanent address, during your registration, you can upload the bank letter that the bank will give you and then you have to um, uh, declare your permanent address in Australia. Even if you're offshore, you don't have to go back there again. They will give you a registration mm. number. That's a, that's a great mm. tip, actually. Yeah. Um, and Jill? one, yes. Yes, yeah, so that's actually a great tip uh, right there, Jill, because as you know, it's so expensive, you know, especially if you're coming from Pakistan or what have you. Correct. To buy, you know, like 14 hours mm -hmm. from here to Australia. And yes, so that, hours. That, that's a long travel and, you know, very, very expensive. And guys, for those of you, yes. again, you know, listening, if you need help with documents that you have to provide with the registration, so it will be fast mm -hmm. track. Um, your registration, you know, mm -hmm. send us an email. We'll link it on the description uh, below. And so mm, that's correct. a big tip. Again, open a bank account while you're here. And so that will allow you not mm -hmm. to even come in Australia, right? When you, you yes. know, get your registration. And um, there's yeah, one so... more option, Miss. Sorry. Oh, okay. Yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah. There's so actually, yeah, there's one more option, actually. That's the, the, um, when you um, get your in principle letter, if you weren't able to get uh, an open a bank account in, in uh, during your OSCE phase, um, if you get your in principle letter, just try to apply first because that's what I, I did. Um, even though without I, without the registration number, I, I tried to apply directly to hospitals and some employers, they will uh, invite you for an interview. And actually I was hired without a registration number. Just the employer wow. told me that once you reach Australia, uh, you can do the in-person with us and we will be the one to process it with AFRA. So that's another thing. You have to uh, try first and then um, 
let see if there's an employer who is willing to 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 process it with you. Mm -hmm. I didn't know that, Jill. And so, yes, so thank you yeah. for the valuable tips. So for those of you who are listening, there you mm -hmm. go. Uh, there's another way for uh, for you to get registered, not presenting in person. Uh, we hear you. We've heard you. And um, I hope that helps what Jill has said. And, um, yeah, so, again, uh, congratulations, Jill, on your new job here as an uh, operating theater nurse in Australia. Yeah. Uh, you've got you've got both you've got beauty and character and um look, i'm very happy to have been able to mentor you uh we have the same faith of course and i believe that you're mm -hmm. going to keep shining wherever you're planted and there's definitely a great future ahead of you and talking about characters i love uh, character i love what uh, john wooden has said be more concerned with your character than your reputation because your character is what you really are, while your reputation is merely what others think you are. It's nice, isn't it? So um, wow. definitely, I yes. love you. And look, I'll be praying for the smooth transition here in Australia. And I believe that's already given for you, Jill. Thank you. Um, you're easy to get along with. You have, um, you have the most beautiful soul. And I love it. And if you find everyone who are listening if you find this review interview helpful for you i please in, share it with your friends i encourage you to um send them this link and uh, we'll be very very happy to help you we'd love to help you and we're here to help you again thank you so much jill Thank you, Miss Kay. Again, uh, thank you for this opportunity to share um, our my experience. And of course, I would like to thank uh, Miss Christine Dewang and the whole AON Pathway team. This this won't be possible if um, um, with, uh, without you guys. So uh, I'm really I was mentored by the best. And for those who are listening. Um, AUR and pathway is the way to go, and you won't be uh, disappointed. So um, yeah, thank you, Miss Christine, uh -huh. for your for your heart to to uh, help uh, the offshore uh, nurses applicants. Thank you, Jill, and um, thank yes, you. Uh, you said it nice and well, and I'll see you guys again on the next episode.